Hi everyone, in this video we are going to take a look at how to undo and redo actions in Godot. For this purpose I have created a project in which I have a color rectangle and a few buttons and I want to be able to draw on this color rectangle and to undo or redo my drawings. So let's get started. First of all I'm going to go to my draw tool and add a new script and here I'm going to simply remove the ready and the process. And let's think a bit of what we have to do. We want to be able to get the input from our mouse. And uh, if we are in this color rectangle area, we want to draw something. So I'm simply going to write func input and event. And here we have to define an action for our mouse. So I'm just going to go to project settings and go to input map. And maybe let's just say draw. And this new action that I defined, I'm going to click on plus and click with my left click and click OK. And now my left click is going to be this draw action. Now what we want to do is while our mouse is pressed, we want to draw a line. So let's just create some variables. I'm going to say var pressed equals false. And additionally, I'm going to create a var current line, which is going to be a line to D. And this is going to equal to null. Okay. Now, how do we check if our mouse is pressed inside this color rectangle? Well, we can go to our color rectangle and click node. And you see that we have here mouse entered and mouse exited signals. So maybe let's just rename this node. Let's call it canvas. Okay. And if I double click on uh, these signals, so mouse entered, I'm going to attach these functions to our draw tool and connect. And this other signal mouse exited and attach it to draw tool. Now we can create a new variable, call it inside drawing region and this is going to be equal to false and whenever we enter our canvas we want to say that yes we are inside our drawing region so this is going to be true and when we exit it we want to say that we are no longer in the drawing region so we set it to false good now we can move on to checking for our action so i'm going to write if event dot is action pressed and select draw and additionally if we are inside the region so if inside drawing region we are going to say pressed equals true and we want to create this line so let's just say current line equals to line to d dot new now I can add some uh, settings to my line to make it prettier. So I'm just going to say current line dot begin cap mode equals line to D dot line cap round. And additionally, I'm going to say current line dot end cap mode and do the same thing. So line to D cap round. And now that we have the line, we want to instantiate it under our canvas. So I'm going to click on the canvas and hold control and now drag it in my project here. And I have a reference to it. So now I can add the current line as a child of the canvas. So I'm going to do canvas dot add child and just say current line. Okay, now we need to check some other events. So for example, if we stop pressing, we want to basically no longer say that this is pressed. So if is action released, draw, we want to say the press is equal to false. And finally, our line is made out of points. In order to be able to draw a line, we have to add multiple points to our line. So to do that, I'm simply going to make a few checks and afterwards add points every time to our line. So if I say if event, and what do we want our event? If basically our mouse is moving. So if event is input event uh, mouse motion, okay. And additionally, 
if our mouse is moving and pressed and also inside the drawing region. Now we want to add points to our current line. So I'm going to say current line dot add point. And where do we want to add this point? Well, we want to add it at event dot position. And now if we run, we can see that currently we draw a little line on our canvas. Now you can see that the line is slightly lower than my mouse and this happens because the canvas does not start from the origin and so I need to subtract from this the current canvas position. So let's just subtract canvas.position. And now if I draw you can see that I'm drawing a line directly under the mouse. Okay, now let's just make our line a bit prettier. I'm gonna say var gradient equals gradient dot new and we can say current line dot gradient equals to gradient. And now if we run, you can see that our line is now a gradient from black to white and we can change those colors and we'll do that in a few minutes. Now, what if we wanted to have in our drawing application the possibility to fix some mistakes? So maybe we want to undo something to draw again, or maybe we want to redo so we go back to what we undid before. For that, Godot has a cool feature called undo redo, which holds the whole history of actions that we did and enables us to undo some actions or to redo some actions. So let's just create a new variable with this undo redo class. So I'm just gonna say var undo redo and this is going to be of type undo redo and it's going to equal to undo redo dot new. I challenge you to say undo undo redo. <laughs> A lot of times in a row. Okay, now what we want to do, we want to define some action that this undo redo is going to keep track of. So what is the main action that we want to be able to undo? Well, we want to be able to undo this add child action because this is basically what adds our line to the canvas. So let's just go above here and let's just write undo redo dot create action. This is going to create an action, let's maybe call it draw line. And in this action, we want to be able to add a child, but also to add the functionality to undo this behavior. So if we added a child previously, we want to remove the child. Now, how are we going to define this action? Well, we have to define first what the code has to do and also what the code has to do in order to undo. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, say here undo redo and we want to add a new do method. What this does is to basically define what method we are calling in order to do the action. And this is going to be a callable. So what are we calling? We are calling canvas.addChild. So let's just say canvas.addChild. And because this is a callable, we want to bind to it our current line as a parameter. So we want to say dot bind current line. And now we need to do our undo method. So I'm going to say undo redo dot add undo method. Now what does this do? What this does is basically to add the method that is going to be called in order to undo what we previously did in add do method. So what did we do previously? We basically added a child. So let's just remove that child. And how are we going to do that? Well, we can write canvas dot remove child and we want to bind the current line. Now, maybe you won't always have a global reference to your current line. So what do you do in that case? Maybe you don't want to go over all the children of canvas to see which one is current line and then to remove it. Now what we can do is simply call undo redo dot add do reference. And what this does is to simply keep track of the parameters that we have used in our add do method. So we can basically keep track of current line. 
And now if we want to bind this current line in order to remove it, the undo method is going to know about it. Okay, but basically now we have done everything. So we have our do method, we have our undo method, and now we want to commit our action. So I'm going to say undo redo dot commit action. So this is basically like a wrapper around our do and undo methods so that undo redo knows when to stop with our current action. Okay, now we no longer need our canvas add child because we have already implemented it here. And now that we have defined our action, we want to know how to actually undo it, right? So let's just go to our undo button. And here I'm gonna click on node and add some behavior on this button down event. So I'm gonna double click it, and just connect it to our draw tool. And in this, we simply have to write undo redo dot undo. What this method is going to do is basically to simply call the functions that we have under undo method. So if we have drawn a line, what this is going to do is going to remove that line. So if we run right now our program, if we draw something, if I click undo, you see that whatever I have drawn is now gone. Okay, now um, what if I wanted to redo that action? Uh, well, that's very simple as well. We can go to redo and again add the button down event, we connect it and we simply say undo redo dot redo. Okay, now if I draw, you see I have one line, another line, and another line. If I click undo, I get rid of those lines. But if I click redo, you see those lines are now back. Now, before we continue, please remember that these videos are free and will forever stay free. If you want to support me, please consider clicking the subscribe and the like button. Now, let's just experiment with some other things that we can do. For example, let's just add a function to this button down for our randomized color. So maybe we want to not have the same gradient, we want to have another gradient. So I'm going to simply create uh, the three colors in uh, an RGB color. So far red, which is going to be a float. And let's just put it with some random value. So rand F. And we're going to do the same for green and blue. And Finally, our color is going to be var color equal to color of red, green, and blue. And now that we have the color, we want to be able to add a point to our gradient and remove our previous color or our previous point in the gradient. So what I'm going to do is again call undo redo and define a new action. Let's just say create action. And this action is going to be called randomize colors. Now, how do we do this action? Well, if we were to look at our gradient, uh, this gradient basically has a bunch of points and each point has a given color. Now, if we didn't specify anything, the first point is simply going to be a black point. So what we are going to do is to remove that point and to add a new point of a different color. So the first do method is going to be undo redo dot add do method. And we are going to say gradient dot remove point. And let's make this a callable. In this remove point, we are going to bind the value zero. So we are basically removing the first point. And the next thing we want to do is to add a new point. So let's just say undo redo dot add do method. Again, another method, which is going to be gradient dot add point. And again, making this a callable with bind. And what parameters? The first parameter is where we want the point to be from between zero and one. And what color do we want the point to have? Let's put it in the middle. So let's just say 0 0.5 and let's just put our new color here. Okay, now a very important thing is that when we undo the methods, they happen in the reverse order. So if we want right now to undo this behavior, we would basically have to first uh, add 
back the point that we previously had and only afterwards remove that point. Maybe we'll see clearly after we add this. So let's just say undo redo dot add undo method. And for this method, we want to bind the previous color. So I'm going to say gradient dot add point dot bind. And again, at uh, 0 0.5 and our previous color, maybe we can get it. Let's just say var current color equals to gradient dot get color of zero. So basically get the first color and let's just say current color. And finally, what we are going to do is undo redo dot add undo method. And here, let's just say gradient dot remove point dot bind zero. So let's just commit our action. Now let's run this and see what it does. Well, if we draw something, you see that it's still the same. But now if we click on randomize color, you see that they turn green and now they turn purple and so on. Now, if I click undo, you see that it's back to purple and it's back to green. And again, it will be back to the default color that we had. And now if I click undo again, undo is going to know in its history that our previous action was to add a line. So clicking again, remove that line. So we can do them in any order. Basically added the line, added the color, added the new line. You see, if I click undo, it removes the line. Now it changes the color. Now it removes the other line and so on. And of course, redo does the same. Now we can not only change methods, but we can also change properties of objects. So for example, if I were to add a functionality to this modulate button, I can click on this button down and connect a new signal. And here, I can change the modulate property of our lines. So let's just create an action for this. Undo redo dot create action. And this action is going to be called modulate. Okay. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to simply modulate with some color. If we go, for example, to our canvas, to visibility, you see that we have modulate and this modulate takes a hexadecimal value. So I'm going to simply say undo redo dot add do property instead. So no longer adding do method, we are adding a new property. And you see that we need an object. And what is the object? Well, the object is going to be current line. We want to modulate the current line. And what's the property? Well, the property here is modulate. If you hover, you can see that it's modulate without having the uppercase as the first letter. So I'm going to say modulate. And we want to apply some color. Let's just say some random color. I don't know, C630D2. <laughs> Why not? The undo property is going to be undo redo dot add undo property. And again, we want the current line and modulate. And we want to set it back to the modulate color that it had previously. And previously the color was white. So I'm just going to say FF, FF, FF. Now, obviously we could remember those colors. And again, we could do something like we did here with a random color to modulate. That would be perfectly fine. But for this example, let's just keep it simple. And finally, we want to commit our action. So undo redo dot commit action. Now let's see what this does. If I run it, I can draw a line. And if I click modulate, you see that our line gets slightly purplish. So now we can basically randomize colors and do it again, modulate with these new random colors. And if I click undo, you will see that the random colors will, will go back and the modulate will go back. Again, the line is going to not be drawn, the random colors go back and so on. So you see how this whole history is being remembered by the undo and redo buttons. No matter what kind of actions we do, you see we have three different actions already, we can still undo without caring about it. Now, one final thing that I want to show you is this uh, new button that I'm going to add a feature to. 
which is going to be the clear history. So let's just call undo redo dot clear history. This is a method that helps the undo redo component basically forget everything. So if we run this, you can see that we can draw a few lines and we can undo and redo those lines. But if I click on clear history, our undo redo component is going to basically forget everything. So if I click undo, you see that nothing happens. If I click redo, again, nothing happens. But of course, if I were to draw something again, or maybe randomize the colors, undo and redo is going to remember only those steps. So you might see how you could use this in different games to disable the possibility to undo uh, in some cases. Now, this was pretty much it. Hope this was helpful and see you in the next one.